experience that, that, that I'm pretty confident are going to hold is if, if you know, I was going to school in the 1980s, I moved from Cheshire, the sort of Merseyside side of Cheshire to Essex when I was 13. But I, I was a big, I was a big football fan. Uh, I was very keen to be taken to see real football matches when I was seven, eight, nine or 10. Um, There's a level of overt racism in football stadiums in the mid 80s, the late 80s, the early 90s that, that receded from the mid 1990s. And it was a very big cultural shift, uh, at club level, at international level, you know, what the culture of going to an England match was incredibly different by the late 1990s than it would have been beforehand. But that was that was symbolic of the um, level of tolerance for overt racism, overt prejudice in society, where the racist jokes were banned to or whether they were racism. And then secondly, I graduated from university in um, 1995, going out into the world of the very late 90s, the early 21st century, um, there was very little presence, and people forget this now, of black, Asian, mixed race people in our public life. It's coming through in the 1990s. But I graduated from university. There'd never been an Asian or black government minister in this country. Um, There were, when I cast my first vote, six out of 650 visible minority members of parliament. So this, this normality of diversity and national politics especially, but public and professional life more generally. I saw that happening really in the early years of this century. And and those those are big significant changes that relate to a change of expectations across the generations that I think we'll hold on to, um, but also create a, something of a polarisation between generations to what our expectations, what our aspirations are for how fast we need to go further.